Hello, and welcome to ME354 lab number one. My name is Bill Kuykendall, and I'm a lab engineer here in the mechanical engineering department. Today we're going to step you through lab number one, beams and bending. We have two identical beams. Strain gauges are mounted on each of the beams, and the beams are loaded in two different configurations. One of them is three-point bending over here, and the other is in four-point bending. The beams are simply supported in these fixtures. There are load cells at one end to record the reaction force, a deflection meter here to, to register the downward movement of the beam, a turnbuckle to actually apply the force and draw the beam down, and the load cell and strain gauge sensors go through these cables to this data acquisition system, which will record the data and allow us to look at the readout in real time. So we'll break these down in more detail as we proceed. For now, let's start with a closer look at the beams themselves. The beams by themselves are identical, but one is set up in a three-point loading configuration with a single yoke. And the other, on the other side, we'll show you, has a four-point loading configuration with a double yoke. The double yokes and the single yoke are both centered about the, cent the midpoint of the beam. We'll apply a downward force through the beam loading yokes using a turnbuckle secured to the bench top. The beams have strain gauges mounted at various positions, which we'll use to measure the local strains and a load cell at the end to measure the reaction force. Finally, we'll use this digital displacement meter to measure the downward deflection of the beam as it's loaded. So now we'll move over to the four point setup, give you a better view of the double yoke system. The two yokes are positioned symmetrically over the midpoint of the beam, and then they are connected to this bar, which is attached to the turnbuckle, um, which we'll use to apply the downward force. The beams are made of 6061 T6 aluminum. The nominal mechanical properties are listed in the lab manual. All right, so the first step in this lab is to make measurements of the beam dimensions, the strain gauge locations, loading positions, and so on. We need to fill out this table completely for the three-point and the four-point setup. You can use this schematic here to refer to for the labeling. Since this is a remote lab and you can't make the measurements yourself, I've already, I've already done that. I've made the measurements and enter them in a table that is going to be made available to the class. So for this video, I'll just demonstrate taking a few measurements so you can see how, how it was done. For each beam, we will measure and record the beam dimensions, the strain rosette locations and gauge orientations, and the beam loading positions for the three-point and the four-point setups. We'll use a few different tools to make these measurements. Each tool has an associated accuracy and resolution. The tape measure here will be used for the longest measurements. The machinist rule here will be used for measurements up to 300 millimeters. And the digital calipers will be used to make the beam cross-sectional measurements. Take a closer look at the scale of the tape measure. And you can see the smallest increment is one millimeter, which is our nominal resolution. We may be able to improve on that and get to a resolution of half a millimeter if we can clearly see that the measurement falls roughly halfway between the two marks. The accuracy of a class two tape measure is plus or minus 0 0.25 millimeters over one meter. Now we'll take a look at the steel rule. We'll look at the, the finer resolution scale, which is good to one half millimeter. Uh, Theoretically, we could split that and get down to quarter millimeter resolution if your eyes are good enough or you, maybe if you have magnification. The accuracy of the steel rule is plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeters over the full length of the steel rule, which is 300 millimeters. And now we'll take a quick look at the digital calipers, which is best suited for measuring between two parallel surfaces up to 150 millimeters apart in this case. You can see we can easily reference against those two parallel surfaces 
and we get very repeatable measurements. In this case, we're measuring a gauge block, precision gauge block that's one inch wide. And you can see that I'm getting repeatable measurements to 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch. The resolution of the digital caliper is 0 0.1 millimeters. And the accuracy is plus or minus 0 0.025 millimeters over the 150 millimeter length. The point here is that some amount of measurement uncertainty is unavoidable, but we can minimize it by choosing the tool with the best accuracy and resolution for a particular length scale. The skill of the person making the physical measurement is another source of uncertainty and is difficult to quantify. So it's good practice to repeat each measurement several times and take averages of the readings. The first measurement we'll make is the distance between the support points of the beam. So for that, we'll need to use the tape measure. Uh, rather than try to use this hook, uh, I'm going to use the 100 millimeter mark on the, on the tape measure. And I'm going to line that mark up with the center of the support pin. And then I'll go down to the other end here and measure the distance between the, that support pin and the support pin at the other end, which is, I'm reading 800 millimeters. I'll subtract the 100 millimeters here, and gives, that gives me 700 millimeters between the supports. Now we're going to measure the position of gauge number four, uh, which is this gauge right here. We're going to measure that relative to the center of the beam. So we'll use gauge number one, the center of gauge number one as a reference. I'm going to use the steel rule. Line that up between the two gauges. And measure 100 millimeters between the two. So the distance from the loading point is 450 millimeters. So, so next we're going to go ahead and use the the digital calipers to make the measurement on the cross section of the beam. This is a much less subjective measurement. I'm not using my eye to line up two marks. Rather, I have an encoder inside the digital calipers that are precisely measuring the distance between the two jaws. So I can smugly force those jaws against the parallel surfaces, and I get a nice repeatable measurement, 38.34 millimeters. Do the same thing for the height of the beam. Measure in a few different places and make sure it's repeatable. 25.73 millimeters. So the rest of the measurements were done in a similar fashion. The four point setup is done the same way. There's a few other measurements there for the double yoke positions, but otherwise it's the same setup. Let's take a closer look at, at strain rosette number two on the side of the beam. You can see that there are three gauges here. This gauge here is gauge A, and that is lined up with the long axis of the beam. So we define that as zero degrees. Gauge B is in the middle here, and it's at 45 degrees relative to gauge A. And gauge C the top here is at 90 degrees relative to gauge A. All right, so gauge number four is a little different than the other three in that the, the gauge is rotated so that gauge B is the one that's aligned with the long axis of the beam. This one right here. So gauge A is at negative 45 degrees Gauge C is at positive 45 degrees. So 45, 0, minus 45. Before we start taking any measurements, let's go ahead and take a look at this online display here. So you can see up here on the top left, we have our load indicator in Newtons. And this is the actual value right here. Uh, then we have our 12 strain gauges, and they're labeled consistent with what's in your handout. So the first rosette are these first three gauges, 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, and so on. Once I start applying a load, you'll start to see these readings increase. Uh, and the load, we're going to go to 200 newtons and stop, and then we'll take a look at these readings.
will also be monitoring the dial indicator here, which is you can see is zeroed, and it's sitting right on top of the center line of the beam. Using the turnbuckle, we'll now apply a series of loads at nominal increments of 200 newtons all the way up to 800 newtons. At each load increment, we'll record the displacement in millimeters, the reaction load in newtons, and the 12 strain readings in microstrain. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the turnbuckle and start applying a load, and we'll start to see the readout on the screen. And the small little window at the lower right is the deflection meter. So I'm going all the way up to 200 newtons. So at this point, we're going to pause and take a look at the screen. You can see that our deflection is at a negative 0 0.70 millimeters, and our load is at 200 newtons, 200.8 or so. And the strain readings uh, are all over the place. So if we look at strain, strain rosette number one, 1A, that is the strain gauge that's aligned with the long axis of the beam at zero degrees. And we see a negative value of 133 microstrain. So that's a negative 133 times 10 to the minus six strain. Uh, and the readings uh, go on. Uh, you can see that some of them are negative and some of them are positive. A negative value indicates that the strain gauge is in compression. A positive value indicates that the strain gauge is in tension. So right away we can tell certain things about the state of the beam. Some other interesting things here to, to look at. If we look at strain rosette number one, which is on top of the beam at the center, and then we look at strain rosette number three, which is at the bottom of the beam uh, in the same position at the center, opposite strain number uh, rosette number one, you can see that the magnitudes of the A gauges both aligned with the long axis of the beam. So the magnitudes are about the same, the signs are different. So one's in compression, one's in tension, but at about the same value. Then if we look at gauge number two, uh, which is located along the side of the beam, we can see that our outputs are pretty close to zero. Not much going on there. Something else to think about. Okay, um, we're gonna proceed on with the next, next reading. Before we do, we'll record these values, and I can do that by clicking the record button and taking a couple of data, data points. We'll record our digital indicator reading, and then go ahead and increase to 400 newtons. We'll do the same thing here, record our deflection take a few data points of the load and strain readings. Continue on to 600 newtons. Record our data. And finally on to 800 newtons. and record, record our data. All right. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and unload the beam. By loosening the turnbuckle. Okay, so that's the data for a four-point beam. Uh, the procedure for a three-point beam is essentially the same. Um, zero everything, get it preloaded, take the data, uh, and save it. All right, so that's about it for lab number, number one. You'll be provided with a complete data set for both the three-point and the four-point configurations. The equipment will remain set up during your scheduled labs sections, so your TA will be able to repeat parts of the process in more detail and answer questions about anything that was unclear in this video demonstration. Thank you for watching, and good luck.